on the hill of Calvary. My Savior bled for me. My Jesus set me free. Look at the wounds that give me life. Grace flowing from His side. No greater sacrifice. What He's done. My sins are forgiven, my future is heaven, and I praise God for what He's done. The same for the freedom He has won, even death is dead and done, His life has overcome. Say the name above all names Over every broken place He is risen from the grave What He's done What He's done All the glory and the honor To the Son My sins are forgiven My future is there Father's will complete. He reigns in victory. Yes, Lord. Sing hallelujah to the King. He is worthy to receive all the worship we can bring. Sing hallelujah to the King. He is worthy to
Well, good morning again. Welcome to Hope City Church. We're so glad you decided to join us on this glorious Easter Sunday. My name is Will. I'm the worship director here. And we're going to continue to sing in just a minute. But there's a lot of people here. And like, surely there's somebody you don't know that could be your new best friend. So look to your left, look to your right. Find somebody you don't know. Let them know you're glad to see them. And then we'll continue to worship together. to glow. 
nation Singing the song of oldest age Echoing heaven We join the angels as they sing
shall reign, He shall reign forever and ever. Amen. He shall reign, He shall reign. See alone, King Jesus, He shall reign, He shall reign, He shall reign forever and ever. Amen. He shall. thank you for taking on our sin, our shame, and doing what we couldn't do, and reconciling us back to an almighty God. Come, hear our worship, see our hearts, and Lord, do what only you can do. Meet us right where we are in this holy moment. Because you are holy, holy, holy. Thank you that we have the privilege to cry, holy, holy, holy is the Lord. We love you. We adore you. All this is for you. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Maybe seated.
Hi, welcome to Hope City Church and Happy Easter. My name is Allison and we're so glad that you've taken the time to worship with us today. You'll notice a connection card in the back of the seat in front of you. On it, there are a few ways that you can connect with us. If you're a guest with us today, please fill out as much information as you are comfortable giving us so that we can connect with you. For those of you watching online, welcome. We've also included an online connection card for you located in the description of this video. In fact, for every first time connection card turned in today, Hope City Church will make a $5 donation to a local charity. This month's charity is the Tuscaloosa Community Soup Bowl. The Community Soup Bowl provides hot meals every day for the homeless and hungry in our city. We are hugely grateful for your generous giving towards the mission of Hope City Church. There are several ways to give today. You can write a check and drop it in the offering bucket on your way out of the building today, or you can text to give right now by pulling out your phone and texting whatever dollar amount to 84321 and following the prompts. You can also download the Church Center app on your phone and set up weekly or monthly giving. Lastly, you can go to our church website, hopecitytuscaloosa.com, and go to the Giving tab. Once again, we are so grateful for your partnership in loving our city in significant ways. This Friday night is Refresh. Refresh is a gathering for ladies 50 and over to eat, worship, and be encouraged by God's heart over your life. Refresh will meet in the Fellowship Hall at 6 p.m. You can register for Refresh on the Church Center app, or for more information, simply write the word Refresh on your connection card, and someone will contact you soon. Are you interested in leading a small group here at Hope City? If so, then join us on April 14th after the 11 a.m. gathering for a small group leader orientation. Just to clarify, attending the orientation does not commit you to leading a small group. A free lunch and childcare is provided. Register on the Church Center app or write small group orientation on your connection card and drop it in the offering bucket on your way out. Ladies, If Gathering is coming soon. If Gathering is for all women 16 and up, we'll gather to be encouraged, worship together, hear some great speakers, and eat some delicious food. This is a great way to meet some new friends and grow in your identity in Jesus. If you'd like more information or would like to sign up for IF, pull out your phone right now and sign up on the Church Center app or write the word IF on your connection card. The cost is $35 and scholarships are available. Are you new or newish to Hope City? Or maybe you've been hanging around for a while and you're ready to find out more about Hope City. If so, next week after our 11 a.m. gathering, we'll be hosting step one in our discovery classes, Discover Hope City. This class is the next step for you to get to know who Hope City is, why we exist, and why we're so passionate about the city. We'll meet in the Fellowship Hall, which is located next door in our education building. A free lunch and childcare are included. Register on the Church Center app or write the word discovery on your connection card and someone will contact you. Well, hey Hope City, how are we? Happy Easter! My name is Amber, and I have the privilege of serving around here, and man, what an honor it is that I get to be up here and welcome you all, be one of the first ones to see your smiling faces, and celebrate with you that the tomb is empty and our Christ has risen, so welcome to everybody. Now, I don't know if you know this, but Easter is kind of a big deal on the church's calendar, and so we know you could literally be a hundred different places, and the fact that you walked through that door and sat in that seat, whether you are a first-time guest or a long-time attender, we really believe that God is going to do something miraculous this morning, so welcome to everybody. Now, normally, in this time of our originally programmed schedule, I would normally be praying for a church in the city. And we do that because it is Hope City's heart's desire that we would uplift churches around that are doing great things in the community. We want to walk alongside them. We know that this work can be hard that we're supposed to do, and we don't want to do it alone, and we want to celebrate other churches that are doing great things. And if you've been around, you've heard me say that Hope City is a church. We're not the church, but today it gives me great joy that we are going to pray for the church. We are going to pray for every church today that is having a celebration, every person that's sitting in a seat that is getting to hear God's word, every church in the city, every church in the nation, and every church on this globe. And so if you will, please bow your head with me as we go before our Father. Dear Lord, 
how we love you. How we are so grateful that you sent your son for us. Father, I just pray that right now as we sit in these seats and as every person sits under you, Father, and they hear you, that they something would just ignite in them. That they would understand the love that you have for your church, Father, the love that you have for your people. I just pray that right now, this morning, every ear would be open, every heart would be turned to you, Father, that we would understand how you want your church today to grow exponentially. And I pray that as every person is about to hear and receive what it is you would have for us, Father, that it, it would allow us to leave refreshed and full of the love and the joy that you want to bring into our lives. I thank you, Father, for everything, and I pray all of this in your son's precious name. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Amber. How are we? How are you looking good? Hey, happy Easter. Yeah. Hey, uh, it's, it's, it's mind-blowing for me I, that, that uh, we're, we're singing, we're celebrating right now, this weekend, uh, with a, about a billion-plus people around around the planet, which is amazing. Singing, celebrating, same thing, that Jesus has risen from the dead. And then this is mind-bending. I don't know if you can get your head around this, but we're, we're also joining with the Unseen Angelic Choir. I mean, they've been singing, celebrating long before you were born, long, long after we're, we're gonna be gone. We, we actually sang it, but it's Revelation 5. Worthy is the Lamb who is slain to receive all power and wealth and wisdom and glory and honor and praise. It's, it's, it's um, unbelievable. What, what's interesting to me, though, around, around this time of the year, knowing there's a billion plus people doing, doing what we're doing, there's really probably a, several hundred million of that billion that the resurrection of Jesus, as amazing as it is, the resurrection of Jesus doesn't actually, doesn't really impact their, their regular life, like their, you know, da daily decisions, what, what they do during the week. I mean, most people, a lot of people are like, you know, it's just an Easter thing. Like we come, come to a gathering like this, sing some songs, great music, and we'll hear a message, maybe get encouraged, go eat some honey baked ham when, when it's over. Um, and, then, and then there's, I think, there's hundreds of millions of people in that, that billion category that are like, oh no, like Easter changes everything. Like the resurrection of Jesus, it, it changes everything that I do, like changes my big decisions, changes how I live my life. It, cha it changes every. Like if I can quote the Apostle Paul where he's like, y you're in the domain of darkness and now I've been transferred into the light of God's grace. Like I was dead in my sin and my trespasses, but now I'm alive because of the resurrection of Jesus. And so what, what, what I wanna do just for our, our few minutes together is I wanna just ask you the question. Where, where do you think you are on that spectrum? Of, of belief. And in fact, let, let's just, we'll make this really easy. Um, we'll just do a quick poll, okay? And just show of hands. This, this is a safe space to do this. Just a quick show of hands. How many of you would say, just with a show of hand, you would say, I, I believe that Jesus resurrected from the dead. Just, just go ahead. Okay, and I, listen, there's a lot of peer pressure in here. I know some of you are like, I don't believe it, but I don't want to look like Satan. So, you know, I'll, I'll, <laughs> um, <laughs> But let's just, let's just imagine, that so, some of you, like, you, you, you didn't believe in the resurrection, okay? Just, like, you don't believe in the resurrection. Um, let, let me ask you, like, if you, if, just pretending you didn't believe in the resurrection, how would your life look different than it does right now? Now, if you have to, to think too hard about that, there's a good chance you don't actually believe in the resurrection, right? Like there, there's this, this guy in the New Testament, a guy named Saul. Saul, uh, he, he really had everything. I mean, that the, the, that the world offered. He, I mean, he was super wealthy. He was influential. He was constantly getting promoted. He was affirmed by the religious crowd. He was persecuting all, all the Christians when, when the church was just getting started. And, and then on the way to persecute some Christians, he runs in, he has an encounter with the resurrected Jesus. I mean, he was like, I know Jesus died. He was dead. 
And then he has an encounter with Jesus who is resurrected from the dead. And Saul becomes a believer in the resurrection. And he's like, it can't, it can't help. I can't help it. Like this, this changes everything for me. So he goes from the guy persecuting Christians to being the most persecuted Christian on the planet. In fact, listen to what he says. This is a little later on. His name, he's basically changed his name to Paul. It's his Greek name, but he's written several letters in the New Testament. I want you to listen to what he says here. And this is where we're going to be. 1 Corinthians 15, beginning with verse 19. Listen to what he says as it relates to he had this encounter with the resurrection of Jesus. He says, if in Christ we have hope in this life only, we are of all people most to be pitied. So he's like, if, there, if there's nothing after this, if there's no life after death, then he's like, why am I living the way that I'm living my life? He's like, I gave up wealth. I gave up influence. I gave up power. I gave up constantly people being like, you're the best, constantly being affirmed. He's like, if, if there's nothing after this, he's like, why am I living this way? He's like, if that's, if that's reality, if there's nothing after this, he's like, you should feel sorry for me. I should be pitied. He's like, but but there is something after this. There, like, there is a resurrection. There is an eternity. And he's like, because I've seen the one that was the firstborn of the resurrection. I saw Jesus raised from the dead. And that does change everything. He doubles down on this in, in verse 32. He says, if the dead are not raised, let us eat and drink for tomorrow we die. So again, he's like, if, if, you know, if there's nothing after this, he's like, man, look. Let's just get after it. Let's just like eat, drink, be merry. Let's pursue the greatest pleasure. He's like, don't worry about hurting people. Don't worry about the consequences. Like, don't worry. Like, man, just suck the marrow out of life. But he's like, the problem is there is something after this. There, there is an eternity. And in fact, how, how many of you, just, a, just curious, last night, it was a very small percentage. How many of you have ever heard of a, a guy named Ethan Hunt? Ethan Hunt, he's a, a secret agent. I, you may not have heard of him because he's secret. He's secret agent <laughs> with the Impossible Mission Force, the IMF, not the I International Monetary Fund, but the Impossible Mission Force. He, uh, it's like the CIA, but way more secret. And he, he has saved the world many times, more times than, than I can count. He's one of my heroes. Like, he's so brave. He's so courageous. He's, he's like a real man. And in fact, recently, and I don't, I don't know if you guys have heard about this. It's, it's not on mainstream media. He, uh, there is an AI chatbot trying to take over the world right now. And he is on the case. He's trying to save our American lifestyle right now. And, and they're, they're, we, Amy and I are watching, it's more like a documentary. We're watching Mission Impossible, the latest. And, and the chat bot is like on this train and he's like going to take over the world and there's some terrorists that are aligned with him. And so he, Ethan, he's on this motorcycle and he's like, I'm going to get, cause he can't just buy a ticket. You know, I mean, AI has taken over the ticket counter as well. He's like, I'm going to get on the train though. So he gets his motorcycle. He's like, I'm going to ride up alongside of the train. I'm going to hop on the train. But the, the AI takes over the train. It's just so scary. It's going like a hundred miles an hour now. And so Ethan, who, again, if you've never met him, he's so brave. He's so brave. He, he's like, well, I've got a good idea. I'm going to ride my motorcycle up a mountain. Now, we are not secret agents. We don't know why that's going to work. But he, he, he's like, I'm going to ride up the mountain away from the train. And we're like, oh, this is incredible. And he, he rides up the mountain and he's like going, going. And you're like, where's he going? And then he just drives off the mountain. And I'm like, he's going to die. I cannot believe this, but good news. He had a parachute, okay, under his like super fashionable outfit, there was a parachute and he parachutes, I don't know how this works. Uh, he like guides the parachute, he catches up with the train going a hundred miles an hour and he's able to direct the parachute and he crashes through the window of the train that terrorists are shooting, AI's taking over. And, uh, and, and then you think like he's about to die. I'm, I've got pit sweat, sweats, I'm like holding onto the chair. And, and then it gets even worse. Then the, the, the bridge where the, the train is driving, it, it explodes. 
And then he falls out the back door. I'm like, he's about to die. What is, I mean, America, we're, it's over, right? And then in that moment, I, rem, I was reminded of an article I read on Google News that Mission Impossible 9 is coming out in 2025. <laughs> and, and he's in it. And I was like, <laughs> scary. I know, listen, I know that's such a dumb illustration. But listen, um, that, that's actually how the resurrection is supposed to make us feel. Like, that's how it makes me feel. Like, things are coming at me, but I'm like, I'm going to be here for movie six, movie seven, movie eight, movie nine. Like, I, like, when I die, I don't actually die because of the resurrection of Jesus. And in fact, Paul doubles down even on this idea in verse uh, 36 and 37. And, and Paul, now, what he's going he's gonna to say, you're, you're like a seed, he says this in verse 36. He says, you foolish person, exclamation point. Now, let me stop on that and just, just tell you, the reason he would call you foolish is, is if you just believe in yourself. He, you would be foolish if you just thought this was it. But he says, what you sow does not come to life unless it dies. And what you sow is not the body that is to be, but a bare kernel, perhaps of wheat or of some other grain. So you, you don't have to be a farmer to understand this. Like you, what you do is you take a seed and whatever that seed is, if it's a seed of corn, you put it in the ground and you would have an expectation that corn is gonna grow up, right? But what Paul's saying is he's like, if you put the seed in the ground, it doesn't, it doesn't produce anything if the seed doesn't die. The seed has to die for it to produce something. And he's gonna say, and it's not just gonna produce one thing, it's gonna produce more of who you're designed to be. In, in fact, he, he says it this way in verse 43. He says, it's sown, now he's talking about us. It's sown in dishonor as a seed, but it's raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, it's put in the dirt, it's forgotten but it's raised in power. It's sown in a natural body, talking about this, and it's raised a spiritual body. If there is a natural body, which there is, there will also, there is also a spiritual body. So this, this is the picture, and, and again, even if you're here and you're not a Christian yet, like we, all, we can all look at the body, not like my body, but you can look at your body and be like, this is an amazing creation. Like God made something and it, it's like amazing and complex and the fact there's all these systems that work together and we're live and we grow and, and it's, it, it's, it's beautiful in its own way. And yet Paul's like, or, or God's like, yeah, as amazing as this thing is, he's like, I made it just to be put in the ground. I mean, like if you think this is amazing, you should see the resurrection that's coming. Amen. Like a Amy, Amy and I, we, uh, we've been on this diet for a few months and not to lose weight, but just like, just to get healthy. Cause we eat trash. And so we we're like last few months is like no sugar, no bread, no preservatives, no fun. No fun. I mean, it's, yeah, it's terrible. It's awful. And like, we're just like out front, you know, grazing on our grass. Like, just like, that's how it's awful. But it, it, like, admittedly, I feel better. I've got lots of energy. I, you know, I'm grateful. I'm working out. It's great. And, and like, just like recently she'll, she'll like walk in the bedroom and I'm like admiring myself in the mirror. And I'm like, mm, <laughs> you know, you, you look good, John. Right. And, and, but then a couple weeks ago, I'm on a tennis court and I just, cause like I'm 50, like things start breaking for no reason. And like, I, I didn't even do anything. I was like, I walk on the tennis court and my wrist starts hurting. <laughs> and, and it's like been very painful. And, and it, it, it's like, it's this reminder. It's like, as I'm looking in the mirror, I'm like, look at, look at, look, look at me. And God's like, you're a seed. <laughs> like you, you can Pilate it up. I mean, you can eat good and fine, eat good. Like get the nip and the tuck and, you know, get the, the cream that's going to get rid of your la you know, laugh lines, like what, whatever. But just know, like you're a seed. Like we're designed to go in the ground. Like if our attention and our affection is just like, I got to live as long as I can, then like you're not really thinking about the reality. Like this thing's, this, this is designed to die so that those who trust in the resurrection of Jesus will be resurrected themselves. He goes on in verse 55. I love this. He says, oh, death, where is your victory? 
Oh, death, where is your sting? Now, I love this because Paul, he, you know, he's mocking death. And I, I know, like, that's hard to do because death is, is a painful reality. But he's like, death, come at me. Like, g- give me your best. Because I know, like, I-, I was part of the process. Like, I know Jesus died, and you thought you won. But Jesus rose from the dead, and he beat you, death. And so Paul's like, I don't, I don't have to be scared of death because I've trusted in the resurrection. I know I'm going to be resurrected, so I don't have to be scared. But let me, let me just be really clear. Some of you should be scared of death. And I don't mean because, like, you're you're going to be eaten by sharks or, you know, like that would be a terrible way to die. I'm just saying like when you die, however you die, whenever you die, the one second after you're dead, like you're going to be more aware of eternity than you've ever been. You're going to be more aware, no matter what you believe, you're going to be more aware that there's a creator in the universe and you're about to be judged by him for how you've lived your life. But the message of the Bible, this is what's so beautiful about Scripture, the message of the Bible is like, this is why Jesus has come. Jesus has come to take the penalty of our sin so that we can be sons and daughters of God, so that we can, when we die, we won't die. We can be more alive than we've ever. So like when when you die, if you've trusted in Jesus, you trusted in the resurrection, and I don't just mean like, yeah, I just, you know, I filled a car or raised my hand one day. Like, I mean, like if you trust Jesus, And for those of you that are going to trust Jesus today, trust the resurrection today, what happens is when you die, literally, like three seconds later, you're like, you know, when I was alive, like, you know, three or four seconds ago, like, I was a mess. I mean, even with Jesus, I was a mess, which is true. And, and I, I was really selfish, even with Jesus. I was selfish, and I was broken, and I hurt some people. But thank God he sent his son to take my sin, to take the penalty of my sin and my shame and my guilt and to make me a new person and to call me son and daughter of God so that when I die, I won't really be dead. So like when Paul says, death, where is your sting? I, I think about um, I think about bees. Like I, This is sort of embarrassing. I, I subscribe to a bunch of channels on YouTube for beekeepers. I'm, I'm a, an aspiring beekeeper, okay? <laughs> Uh, that we have some real beekeepers in, in the room today. Um, and I'm always like, tell me about this. And I've heard this. And I, so-and-so said this. What do you think? And, and I, I love beekeepers because if you watch any of the videos, they, they build a relationship with the hives. And eventually, they can go up to this hive. After, after they, they kind of built some trust. And they can literally, without any protection, without any gloves, without any mask, they can go in and just like scoop out a thousand bees with their hand and not get stung. Every once in a while, though, one of the bees will get agitated and, and, and will sting, sting the beekeeper. And the person videoing, they'll, they'll, you know, they'll be watching or videoing, and the person's like, oh, I just got stung. Just like that, just like, very, like low tenor, oh, I just got stung. And they're like, oh, my gosh, are you okay? And they're like, yeah, yeah it's just, just a little honeybee. And so they put all the bees back in, and then the person just very carefully you know, grabs the stinger, and he's like, yeah, it's it's." Just a tiny little honeybee. And, and I, say, I say that because when, when you are a person of the resurrection, when you've trusted in, in the resurrection of Jesus, you look at death and, and then you're like, it's just, a, it's just a little sting. Like, it's just something that's like, oh yeah, d- death now, like, I own you, death. Like, death's now the doorway into the resurrection. In fact, he, he goes on. And he says this in a different way, in a different place, 2 Corinthians 4. Listen to this, my favorite chapter in the Bible. He says, so we don't lose heart. Though our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. For this light momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. As we look not to the things that are seen but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are transient, but the things that are unseen are eternal. So listen, yes to, like, there is real pain. There's real loss. If we, if we had time today and we could take a mic and, you know, just hear everybody's story today, we would feel the weight of, of real painful seasons. Some of you are right in the middle of the worst trauma of your life. Some of you are coming out of that. Some of you are about to head into a season like that. I don't, I don't want to dismiss that or demean that, but 
What Paul says is when, when you really get your eyes, your spiritual eyes on the resurrection and you become a person of the resurrection because of Jesus, everything that we go through, we can really begin to say it's just a light and momentary affliction. Like in comparison to the resurrection, like our, our pain and our loss, which is real, like it's almost nothing in comparison to the beauty and the power of the resurrection to change everything in our life. So let, let me do this. Let me, let me transition. I'm just going to take a hard right turn here, okay? Um, because I, when I'm around like my friends who don't know Jesus, and I've got, I've got lots of friends that don't know Jesus, um, and I've got friends who, th- who think they know Jesus, like they've lived in the South long enough, too long probably, and, and they, they like think they know Jesus, but they don't follow Jesus, which is like, if you know Jesus, you're going to follow Jesus, right? Because Jesus is the best. Like he's the most powerful, gracious. He's amazing. I mean, he, he's everything. He's everything. And so, like, if you're like, oh, I know Jesus, but you don't follow Jesus, then you don't know Jesus. Like, that's not a, it's a distinction that's worth making. And so I've got friends who, like, just, they just don't know Jesus. And, and I'm a, I, just by, by my own temperament, I can be a beggar. Do you know anybody that's just like a beggar? You know, like, you, you, you get in that. And, ple, and pleading and begging just doesn't look good on me. But I get there, like these people that I really care about. And, I, and I, I'm like, what, you, why don't you just accept Jesus? Why don't you trust Jesus, man? Like, look at your life. I mean, you're like, it's so filled with anxiety. And, and you've got this weird ambition to make a name for yourself. And you're trying to like, climb in this ladder. And like, what are, you, what are you doing? Like, trust Jesus. Like, Jesus literally will make your life better. I mean, I'm not saying it's going to cancel all the stupid decisions you've made over the last 20 years, but like, it's going to, he's going to make your life, he's going to, it's, it's life abundant, but more than that, really, the big deal is you're not going to be spiritually dead anymore. Like, why don't you trust Jesus? Just trust Jesus, please, just trust Jesus, right? And then, and then I, I remember there's this little phrase that Jesus uses, and no, nobody else in the Bible uses this phrase. Jesus is the only one that uses it. He says, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. And, and it's the idea that some of you are coming in, and for the last several months, God's been, been having these little d- divine encounters for you. Like, he's setting up circumstances where you're, like, wondering, like, is God real? Or is Jesus, is, is he somebody that's worth trusting? Or you've had these conversations with somebody at work. Or, like, just stuff's been happening. And, and all of a sudden, your, your spiritual ears are awakened and you're coming in this today and you're, you're hearing everything that, that's being said today. And there's something coming alive in you and, and having ears to hear, now it's gonna move you to respond. You're gonna come alive by the resurrection today, which is amazing. Some of you, if, if I can be honest, you're coming in today that you don't have ears to hear. And, and, and I'm, like, I'm so glad that you're here, but you, you, know, you got invited and you're like, yeah, it's just, it's just the thing to do. I, I was raised in the South. And so like, that's just what I do. Like I, this is when I come to church. I don't come to church any other time. And like, again, God bless you. Like, we'll see you on Christmas Eve. Like, we're so glad that you'll be here. But like, you're not interested in Jesus. You don't have ears to hear it. And you're on, just to be honest, like, just to be honest, you're, you're not interested in following Jesus. And like, again, God bless you. God bless you. Like, uh, it would be a dishonor for me to try to manipulate you today. And I just respect you more than that. So, like, we're not going to turn the lights down. We're not going to turn the smoke machine. We don't have a smoke machine. But if we had one, we're not going to turn it on. We're not going to, like, there's not going to be some, like, weird music. And we're going to be like, okay, we're going to sing this song again and again and again. We're going to get the emotions. Like, we're just not going to do that. And the reason is, like, what, what the Bible teaches is there is truth and empowered by the Spirit, this truth can set you free. So I just want to just, just take the next two minutes. I just want to just tell you the truth. So here's what Paul says. Back to 1 Corinthians 15. He says, this is verse 3. He says, for I deliver to you. This is what I'm about to do to you and for you. He says, for I deliver to you as of first importance what I also received. That Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scripture. So that, that's the whole message, by the way, of the weekend. Friday is Good Friday, where Jesus dies on the cross, taking our place. We, we deserve to go to the cross. We, we, we act, Jesus was not a criminal, but he died a criminal's death. And the reason he died a criminal's death is because he took our place. We're the criminals. 
We're the perpetrators. We're the villains in this story. And Jesus on the cross took our place. And everything that we deserved was put on him. And then Paul goes on in verse four, he says, and then he was buried, meaning he's, only dead people are buried. He was buried. And then he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. And so what, what happened is that Jesus, he's in the tomb three days. The spirit of God rises him, raises him from the dead. And then he shows himself to 500 people. And the 500 people are like, we saw you dead three days ago. There's, there's not anybody on the planet that could survive what you went through. And yet he's fully alive, fully healed, resurrected body. And the 500 people, they just began to like go tell everybody because they're like, that, that was impossible. But it's not impossible. Like I saw Jesus alive, resurrected from the dead. And Jesus saying like, if you trust me, if you'll follow me, he's like, you'll be resurrected from the dead as well. You'll be with me forever. And they're like, this isn't some like doctrinal statement we heard. Like we saw the doctrine. We, we saw the one that was raised from the dead. And so now we're willing to die for this thing. All of us. Let, let me tell you what, what this looks like just in, in real life. Um, let, me, let me illustrate this. So just, just imagine with me. I'm just going to. So just, I, I want you to imagine, that, like, this is eternity, okay? And, like, clearly, this, this rope, just imagine this rope just keeps going on and on and on. Imagine it's not tied to a music stand, okay? But <laughs> I, just imagine, like, this is eternity. And, and this is your eternity. Because, l- listen, every one of you will live forever somewhere. So I want you to imagine this is your eternity. And, and it goes on and on and on and on. But like this, this little red part, th- this, is, this is you on planet Earth. Like this is while you're alive on, on the Earth. And, and it's so funny because like this, this little red part, we're obsessed with this red part. Like we, we love this red part. We, are, we, we give all of our energy, our passion, all of our anxiety. Like we have all of it to this little red part, like this 70 or 80, 90 years. Like this is, this is our entire life. And, and we're like, and we're like we hyper-focus on this. And we're like, okay, I'm right here. This is where I am. And I, I, according to LinkedIn, this is where I am, you know, and I'm working and working and working and working and working. And, but then I get here, oh, I'm going to start saving, 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 saving. And then I get, then I'm going to get right here. Ugh. Then we're going to eat good, all right? This is when we're going to vacation and we're going to cruise. And this is retirement. Like, I, I'm everything up to here, all the way up to here. Like, it's just like, just for this last part. So, oh, man, I mean, we're going to live so good. And then like 10 minutes later, you're dead. And I'm like, yep. And I, I'm like, okay, I get it. I get it. But what about the rest? Like, this is why the Bible's like, this, this thing, it's a mist. That's the, the Bible describes our life as a vapor. You know what a vapor is? You ever see somebody with a vape pen? You know, it's like, and God's like, that's your life. Gone. Gone. And the point is like, this, and this is, this is the message of the Bible. Like what you do with this part of your life, like how you live your life, more specifically, what you do with Jesus in this part determines the rest. Like make no mistake about that. Like I, I, I you know, since I've been a Christian, I've been a Christian for 30 years. Came, some of you know I grew up out of, of I came, became a Christian out of a non-religious Jewish home. And many of my, my like, my family, my extended family, um, for years, they, they, they were like, John, you're stupid. Like the way that you live your life as a Christian, like you're, you're stupid. Like, because you live your life in a way, like you spend your money in a way and you, you do things and, and choose not to do things. And, uh, you, you know, you risk certain things and, and like, it's going to impact this, your life. It's going to impact this. And I'm like, you're the stupid one. 
because you do anything you want in this life and it impacts everything else. It impacts eternity. And, and I tell you that because that's the message of, of Easter. The, the message of Easter is Jesus has, has said in, in one decisive blow, I'm going to give you abundance in the here and now. I'm going to give you real life. But then I'm going to secure eternity for you. You get to live with me forever. Amen. And that's, that's the invitation today. Now let me tell you how, how this is going to work today because I don't, I don't want to miss an opportunity for some of you to say yes to Jesus. Some of you, you, you don't know how long you're going to live. I mean, some of you, you might live to the ripe old age of 100, and some of you, this, you may have stage four cancer right now, and you don't know it. And so I want to I give you an opportunity, and we're going we're gonna to make this uh, like really easy because when, when Jesus when Jesus invited people in into the kingdom, it's so it's so interesting. He didn't do it like we do it. You know, we're like, okay, everybody bow your head and we don't want anybody to see and we want to you know protect your personal agency and like we don't want to embarrass you. Jesus, like he he was kind of like he was out to embarrass people. He's just like in very public places, he's like, Hey guys, I know this is your entire vocation and you have all these nets for fishing, and I know this is your identity and your livelihood, but I want you to drop all of your nets and your livelihood and your identity, and I want you just to follow me. And that was like, that's what he did. He's like, just follow me. Notice he was never like, and then before you do that, let's pray this prayer and close your eyes. Like, and I'm not, I'm not demeaning prayer because we're gonna do that in a second, but, but the way that, that people got into the kingdom is by simply following Jesus. That's like, he's like, here's where you are. Here's what you're doing. Now follow me, because like wherever I go is going to be where the kingdom is. And so for some of you, right, like right today, today is going to be the day that the entire trajectory of your life changes. Because you're going to say yes to Jesus. And Jesus is going to lead you places you couldn't even imagine. So here's, here's what we're going to do. We're not, no, we're not going to, no music. We're not going to turn the lights down. We're not even going to ask anybody to close their eyes. I'm just going to invite you today, just with the courage of the kingdom of God. If today you're like, I want to say yes to Jesus, would just go ahead and say, stand up. Just stand up right where you are. Have courage. This is a safe, this is the safest place in Alberta City to be like, I'm ready for a change. I'm ready for a new life. Just go ahead and say yes to Jesus right now. Stand up. He who has ears, let him hear. Stand up. Praise God. If you stood, keep standing, keep standing. Thank you so much. Thank you for your courage. There's courage getting stirred up as you see people saying yes to Jesus. Some of you even right now, you're saying, I don't wanna say yes in front of other people. I can say yes in private, and, and you can. But I, I find those that say yes in public, they will live their life in public. Anybody else? Can we just celebrate our two friends? Okay, we're gonna we're gonna do a little housekeeping. Thank you guys so much. I love that. So this is for everybody, okay? Even the little rebel hearts. And some there's some little rebels in the room today. There's a, there's a card 
in front of the seat, in front of you. Now, those of you on the front row, just kind of reach behind you. Uh, there's a card. It's just, it's just an Easter card. And what, what we'd like to do first is I just want everybody just go ahead and just fill out your information. I promise we're not going to show up. We're not going to sell it. But, but we're about to do something with that card, okay? Just go ahead and just everybody fill that out for me. Take just 60 seconds to do that together. Just go ahead and do that. And, and here's the thing. Don't just, like, just don't do one for your family. Like, I want every person to do it. And I'll tell you why. Okay, so here, here's the thing. It, we make a big deal about people making first-time decisions to say, I'm trusting Jesus for the first time to rescue me, to save me, to make me a brand new person. Knowing when I die, I get to go to, to be with him forever. That's amazing. We celebrate that. But make no mistake, every person in the room is making a decision today. Every time we wake up, Every time we put our feet on the ground, we're making a decision, every one of us. And the decision is like, am I gonna follow Jesus today? Am I gonna trust that his ways are better than my ways? And, and I, I just wanna remind you, like today you're making a decision. On Resurrection Sunday, you're making a decision. And what I'd like you to do, I just want you to record what your decision is. Because we, one, we wanna pray for you. We wanna come alongside you. We wanna encourage you. Um, and so on the middle section of that card, you'll see there's four letters. There's A, B, C, and D. And if, if today you, you trusted in Jesus for the first time, you're like, I'm, the Bible says, you know, it's called salvation. Or um, in, a, in a verb tense, it's I got saved. I love that language. And if you're like, today I became a Christian. I said yes to Jesus especially our two friends that stood, just circle the, the letter A. But some of you, I, I really believe, you, today, for whatever reason, you weren't able to stand up, and you're like, but I, I'm, I'm deciding today to trust in Jesus, and I'm gonna follow him all the days of my life. If that's you, I, I just want you to, to circle the letter A. We're gonna pray for you, but we, we, what we know is like, you can't do that by yourself. Like, there's no such thing as a Christian that, that is isolated. That's not a Christian. Like, you can't, I, I mean, like, sorry to burst your bubble. You can't be a Christian by yourself. You just can't. Like, this, you know, like, and maybe if you live in, like, communist China and you're about to get taken to the gulag, that's Russia. If you get about to taken to, to jail, like, you know, may, there's seasons where, like, yeah, you got to be by yourself. But, like, you cannot live the Christian life on your own. Like, it's an impossibility. You need the Spirit of God and other people to, to encourage you and stir you up and, and hold you up because you won't make it on your own. And so we, we want to we get you some, some help. And then those of you that, that today, you, you, you got around, a, some pro, you got in proximity to the Spirit of God. And there, there's, there's a reality of that. You get into a space like this and we're singing these songs and the, the Bible's opened up and all of a sudden like something comes alive in you again and you're like, oh yeah, I totally forgot what it means to be with the people of God. Oh yeah, this is what I'm made for. I, yeah, I, I, I trusted in Jesus years ago and, and there, there have been seasons where I'm like in it and I'm out of it. And, but like there's huge long periods of time where honestly, I'm just kind of doing life on my own. I'm just kind of making my own decisions and I'm just trusting like, yeah, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Sure, he's, he's king, but let's just be honest. You've kind of been building your own kingdom. But today, like the wrecking ball of the kingdom came in and just, just knock down the thing you've been building. And you're like, okay, I'm, I'm gonna step back into the kingdom. Like that's where I belong. 
And so B would be, if, if I can use this language, I don't love this language, but like I'm recommitting my life to Jesus. But here's the thing. I want you to just know like this is a, this is a decision. This isn't like I'm making an emotional, I'm not making an emotional plea to, to circle the letter B. What I'm making an emotional plea for is for you to follow through with your decision. Because when you say you follow Jesus, you can't say you trust Jesus and not follow Jesus. So I would just rather you say, I'm deciding not to trust Jesus. <laughs> because you can't say you know Jesus and not follow Jesus. So like, I just, I wanna encourage you to be emotionally honest today with yourself. But really the plea is like, trust Jesus because he's the best and follow Jesus because he's the best. And he can free you from anything. And those of you that are being awakened again to that, and you're like, yep, yeah, this is what I'm made for. And I'm, I'm gonna, I'm saying yes again, in a way. If that's you, just, just circle the letter B. We, we wanna help you. We wanna encourage you, we wanna pray for you. We wanna know your name. And then some of you, you, you came in the room and man, you're like, you're in it. You're in the jet stream of the spirit and you're coming in today and you're like, I, I have been following Jesus. Like I'm going after it hard and, and I'm not perfect. I'm still kind of a dumpster fire, but like I, as of today, like I'm, I'm following Jesus. I'm going after Jesus. I, this is like, nothing's changing after today. And if that's you, like, praise God, circle the letter C. We want to encourage you. We, we, we want to celebrate that God has sustained you and is sustaining you. That's so good. And then here's what I also know, is that some of you, 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 you come into a space like this, and it took so much courage to walk into a church because you don't believe anything we just talked about today. And you're walking out still going, I still don't believe it. And you're like, I, I appreciate what you guys do. Like, clearly, this church, like, seems, seems like you guys are trying to make a difference in our city. And you're loving the poor. And, and you're trying to, to bring reconciliation to the races. Like, man, like some good stuff. And I appreciate that. But, like, this whole Jesus thing, I'm, I'm not interested. And if that's you, listen, w would you just have courage just to let us know that? And, just, and you do that just by circling the letter D and just say, I'm, right now, I just don't believe in Jesus. I don't trust Jesus. I, I'm currently don't have any plan on trusting Jesus, but if, if it's okay with you, we'd love to pray for you. And if that's offensive to you, like I, you don't have to sign your name. You can just turn in the letter D and we'll just ask Jesus to tell us your name, okay? <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> but like, here's the thing. Like even people that are like, I'm not even sure what I believe about this. Like, I think you'd probably be okay for somebody to pray for you. And we're just gonna, all we're gonna pray is that God just shows himself to you. We're not, we're not going to be like, get him, God. Like, that's not, that's not how we pray. Because um, here's the thing. Everybody's, everybody in the room at one time was a D. Everybody. And that's the beauty of Jesus. Like, he's so patient and he's kind and he draws us to himself. And so if that's you, would you just circle D? But we're going to finish our time with this. So just go ahead and circle. Just go and do that. I'm going to give you 10 seconds to do that, if that's you. And then we're going to stand up together. And we're going to finish really with a, an anthem to the Lord. I, it, it, I love celebrating Easter because it, it is a reminder. We're resurrection people every day, but, but it's on this day that we... We get to be like the Apostle John in, in John 20, where he walked into the empty tomb, and there's this little phrase, and it says, he walked in, and he believed. And everything changed for him. And so we, we want to sing these. We want to take these last few minutes, and we just want to sing with an extravagance that is fitting to an empty tomb. So, Father, I pray, first, thank you for resurrecting from the dead. Thank you for sending your son into the world to take our place. Thank you for our friends that have said yes to you today. Thank you for our friends that are continuing to say yes to you, knowing that you're enough to sustain and to comfort and to transform our broken lives. Thank you, Jesus. 
We celebrate you, all that you are, Jesus. Amen. Let's sing this together.
happy Easter. Can you do us a favor? Uh, can you leave all of your cards on your chair? And we're going to have team come by and spruce up the place for the next gathering. If you've got any trash around you, do you mind picking that up too? And just leave your cards on. Let me pray a blessing over you. Father, thank you that in, in your wisdom, you sent the Son to make a way for us. And so now we leave in the power of the Son. We leave in the power of the resurrection as resurrected people. Blessings on my friends here. For all that you are, all that you will be, we're grateful. We pray this all in your name, Jesus. Amen. Hey, God bless you. Happy Easter.